Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017, but specifically we're going to be talking about a very important discovery that will hopefully be made during this eclipse, something that may actually have been hiding from us for quite a while. Now, you may have guessed what it is from the title, let's talk about this in more detail, and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now for this particular video I actually just wanted to use something a little bit more simple than Space Engine or Universe Sandbox. We're going to be using NASA's eyes visualization that actually simulates um, the eclipse that will happen in 2017 very very precisely and with quite a lot of detail and you can actually download this for free from NASA directly. Uh, NASA's eyes is a very very popular app and it's been around for quite a while. Now this is what the eclipse will look like from, uh, well, I believe this is Kansas City, so let's actually just roll it and uh, just take a look at what all of this looks like. And here you go. So August 22nd, uh, 22nd 2017, around 2.40 a.m. Kansas City, you'll get to witness something like this. Now, um, th this is actually not what I wanted to talk about. You can definitely explore this simulation by yourself and you can kind of see what Eclipse looks like from different regions around Earth, even maybe put your own city in here and just to discover what it's going to be like at certain times of the day. And uh, it obviously allows you to kind of either zoom in or zoom out or even use different types of lenses here. Um, but the discovery that I want to talk about is actually something that was made very, very recently by um, several people. One of them was a person by the name of Xavier Hubier, and um, he was playing around with the simulations of eclipses and different models, and every time he tried to simulate them, and he actually has a website that is actually full of various information and tons and tons of simulations on various eclipses. It is a very, very complex website, or at least with a lot of different information, but the one uh, that we are interested in is right here and basically it kind of gives you an idea of what all of this will look like what all of this will um, help us understand but he discovered that it seems that when we simulate this um, eclipse and run it with various computer simulations the actual shadow doesn't match what we see at least if you if you actually apply the knowledge of uh you know in terms of uh, size of our sun and size of the moon and try to simulate them using computer simulations they never match up with what we actually see and what he realized is that well it seems that at least if you use google maps uh the shadow of the sun doesn't really match up with the shadow of the simulated sun uh, or i guess um solar eclipse and so something is definitely off about the measurements of this sun and what he actually realized is that um, after matching tons and tons of various simulations over and over he realized that sun must be actually bigger in size than we currently think it's the only thing that seems to make sense it, it seems that the size of the actual sun let's look at it again the size of the actual sun might be actually bigger by a few hundred kilometers compared to what we think it is right now. Now, currently, we think it's about 696,000 kilometers in radius. According to uh, Xavier Hubia, it might be at least 100, a few hundred kilometers bigger, so maybe closer to 697,000 kilometers. Now, that's not a lot. It's only like a fraction of a percent bigger, but nevertheless, that means that um, our understanding of the sun is still not very perfect. We usually look at the sun using various um, telescopes and normally, let me actually just show you using different simulation. Normally what we're looking at is uh, either the x-ray emission or the infrared emission. We're not really looking at the photosphere and the um, visual emissions, but looking at things like shadows, we can definitely measure things more accurately uh, because we'll be able to see um, the actual visual light and thus estimate the size of our own sun. So in this particular example, if we actually look at the shadow size that is formed on Earth from the uh, solar eclipse, we'll be able to then estimate the exact size of our sun, uh, assuming that we'll, we do this several times over the next few years, uh, because we, we know the size of the moon pretty accurately. 
because all of our previous estimates of the size of the sun are actually based on the um, passages of Venus and Mars in front of the sun, and that's kind of how we were able to estimate the size as of now. And this is, of course, not very accurate because a lot of the telescopes we use to estimate um, the sizes normally have limited pixel size, and usually there's a sort of a mistake of at least 150 kilometers or even more. And all of the solar telescopes we use to observe the sun, um, including some of the more famous ones like SOHO, are normally only looking at wavelengths that are not really uh, visible in photosphere. So it's a lot harder to j than just, you know, putting a ruler and measuring the size of the sun. It's actually quite complicated to try to discover the actual size of this object. Now, um, I'm not unfortunately going to be able to see um, the solar eclipse because I'll be right here in South Korea and unfortunately this will not be visible for me. You guys might be a lot luckier than me, especially if you are on this belt that will actually have total eclipse. This is a very rare event that will happen in the United States on August 22nd. And the thing is, uh, the size of our sun for a normal person doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't really matter that this thing is just slightly bigger than we think, but obviously it does matter for a lot of astr astronomical discoveries because we always use our sun as a comparison to other stars. And also because, uh, like for example, if you are actually trying to um, take an amazing photo of the solar eclipse and want to be in a specific location along this belt, or for example, like right here on, on the edge, um, you would not be able to uh, be in a specific location unless you actually have a very precise measurement of the sun and of the moon. So currently, um, quite a lot of groups will be measuring the size of our sun on August 22nd, and hopefully by uh, 2024, we'll be able to actually estimate the size of this beautiful object a lot more accurately. And because we now know or speculate that it's actually larger than we think it is, um, this also m means that the total eclipse that you see right here is actually a very rare event that will only be visible for something like maybe a few hundred million years from now. Um, after that, the moon will actually be too far away, so it will never be a total eclipse anymore. So what you see right now is actually very, very lucky and also very rare in terms of astronomical events and in, term in terms of actual timelines as well. And anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to say because we're still not sure how big the sun is and hopefully in the next uh, few months we'll discover in a little bit more detail, specifically after this particular eclipse, how big this uh, thing actually is. Um, do check out NASA's eyes visualization, it's a very cool app, it'll allow you to see what you might actually miss in real life, or uh, you'll actually be able to predict, like for example, if you're somewhere in here, Bismarck, what you might be able to see if you look at the solar eclipse at that particular date. Now don't forget, if you are going to be observing solar eclipse, make sure not to look at the sun directly, it's super dangerous, don't use any fake uh, goggles that are currently on sale like everywhere. And if you can, just try to use some kind of a darkened mirror instead of looking at the sun directly because it's still very dangerous. Uh, make sure to follow the guidelines because it's really easy to lose your vision by looking at this thing. And there are actually some really good suggestions on uh, Goddard Media Studios from NASA that kind of allow you to basically um, see what is the best way to observe this uh, very rare, very cool and very beautiful event. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video and hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys learning space sciences through video games and wants to learn more about science in general. I'll see you guys tomorrow, you're going to learn something else, so don't forget to come back tomorrow as well. Space out, and as always, bye bye.